Hello everyone, in this video we're going to cover some graphs of numerical data. So keep in mind another word for numerical data that we've seen in this class is also quantitative data. So measurable quantities. So what are some examples that we've seen so far? So we've seen things like height, temp, temperature, so any situation where we're collecting numerical values where it makes sense to take something like an average of the numbers that we collect. All right, so first of all, here's a framework for describing numerical data. So here are some terms uh, that we often look for or characteristics, qualities that we look for in numerical data. And that includes the shape of the data, center of the data, the spread of the data, and any unusual features. So we're gonna go over these in more detail, um, but to give you a sense of what each of these elements include, uh, shape of the data just refers to uh, how the data is spread out. So if we, we'll see some graphs of data coming up, but if we look at say a graph of our data, um, it might look bell-shaped, it might look double bell-shaped, it might look skewed. So that's some terms that we will learn later, but that's the idea of shape of data. Center of data involves where the data is centrally located. Where does most of the data occur? Spread of the data might be what you think. How far away um, from each other is the data? Is it spread out far? Is it all clumped together in one spot? And then of course, any unusual features often includes outliers or subpopulations. could include features um, such as like double bumps, <laughs> like this example as well. All right, so look, let's look at some of these ideas in action. So our first example here says, here is a set of 15 exam scores for a fictional statistics class. So we can see we have 15 different scores and we just might wanna make some notes of this data. So we're just using whole numbers. All of our numbers are, you know, 100 or less and bigger than 30. So there are two ways that we look and graph numerical data. So again, this is when we just have one variable. So in this case, exam score. And that variable is a quantitative variable, meaning uh, numerical values. So the two main types of graphs that we use are dot plots and histograms. So let's first create a dot plot of this data. So the main steps of drawing a dot plot are the following. We first need to set up a number line. And so I'll write these steps down. Set up number line. You want your number line to include all of the data that we have uh, possible. So we start with 31, go into 100. So we might want to start down here at 30, go into 100. And then we want to make sure that our number line has equally spaced chunks. So from 30 to 100, we need 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So we need to label six different uh, tick marks in between 30 and 100. So I might start by, you know, just kind of eyeballing it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And now that can take years of practice. I've been doing math for a long time. So, you know, use a, a pencil, maybe an eraser to help yourself uh, make as equally spaced as possible. We're also gonna see how to use uh, some technology to create just dot plots. Okay, so now I'll label my numbers here. So I have 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. And then it's really important to make sure you label a lot, um, a, a label more than you think you do need to. Um, so in this case, our number line, uh, what are these number lines with, or what are these numbers? Well, these are test scores. So I'll put test score. It's always important to add units to any number line or uh, axis on a graph that you make. Okay, so there's step one, set up your number line. The next step is to draw a dot for each data value. Draw a dot for each data value. And you wanna draw your dot above uh, the location on the number line. So keep in mind that halfway between are our five numbers. So 55, 65, I might just label this so I know where to plot my points. Okay, so now I'm gonna to start to plot my points. So I start with 31. So 
that data value is located somewhere down here next to the 30 and I'll just cross off as I go. And I have 62, so that's somewhere here. 65 is right here. 70 is right here. Now, if you're following along, I want you to feel free to pause the video right now and finish this dot plot for yourself. And when you're ready, uh, restart and we'll compare answers. All right, so your dot plot should look something like this. Notice when you have a repeated number like 82, you stack the dots on top of each other. And that's so you can get a sense of how many data values occur at that specific value, in this case, 82. So I'll just make a note of that on our steps. Stack repeated data values. So one thing you'll notice when you're drawing this data, this dot plot rather, um, is that it gives you a sense of the frequency of the data values. By that, I mean how many times certain data values occur. So we see that we uh, have that 82 happening twice because we have two dots stacked on top of each other. Now, as is, this uh, dot plot gives us some information about the spread and shape of the data. For example, we can see that most of the data occurs here. We can also see that kind of the central, maybe the center of the data is somewhere around here. And again, we'll make more sense of what we mean by center. And then it's spread out mostly between this 60 to 100 range. And maybe this 31 looks kind of like an outlier. Again, we're gonna make more sense of all of these terms uh, in future lessons. But for now, this is just giving us a sense of what this dot plot, it, dot plot is representing. Now, what, another way that we can represent numerical or quantitative data is through a histogram. So in this next section, we're gonna sketch the corresponding histogram for this data using a bind width of 10. Scale and label your graph appropriately. So what does this mean, bin width of 10? Well, for a histogram, rather than, uh, or as a, a dot plot, we represent each data value on our number line with one dot. For a histogram, what we do is collect chunks of data or bins of data and plot the frequency that data values occur within a bin. So we're told that we want a bin width of 10. That means we want our bins to look like the following. We'll have bins that are from, in this case, since we start at 31, would be from 30 to 39, 40 to 49, 50 to 59. So we have these bins of data or bins to put data in. And then from here, what we're gonna do is just sort or count our data into the bins. So we could write it out like this. We can also just look at our data and determine which data lies in which bins. So on my data set, I'll just mark the bins off. So in the 30 to 39 bin, I have one data value and I have nothing in the bins from 40 to 59. My next bin is 60 to 69 oops, and I see I have two values. So you see, I can represent or chunk my data into these bins of size uh, 10. Notice I don't have 10 data values in each bin, but each bin uh, contains data values uh, that have a 10 point range. Well, in this case, nine, because we have to include, well, no, 10, because we include the zero and then all the way up through nine. So here's our next bin of the 80s, the 90s, and then the 100. So what we've just done is determined our X axis or horizontal axis scaling. So this bin size will tell us our X or horizontal axis scale. So because we start with 30, you might want our bins to start at 30 also. So I'm just gonna make a little break in the graph to signify that I'm not starting at zero, but I'm gonna start at 30 to 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. You can put 110. So a few things to note here. 
Well, first of all, before moving on, I want to make sure I label that axis. So again, these values here are referring to the exam scores. It's really important to always label our axes here. So that x-axis or horizontal axis for us are what the data values are. And then the y or vertical axis, we're going to label with frequency. That is how many data values occur in each bin. So I'll label that frequency. And again, just to further clarify what I mean, frequency is the number of data values in each bin. And so something to note here is when I label these axes, I didn't have to label with both ends of the bin, so 30 and 39, and that's just convention. So we call this convention the right-hand rule. You don't have to remember that name specifically, but what we always can know for convention is that the number on the right or the, num the number on the edge of the bin goes to the right. So this 30 is referring to this bar that we're going to draw, and it goes from 30 to 39. I'll just note number on edge of bin goes to the right. Awesome. And one other disclaimer that I want to make here is, I'm going to erase this to give myself more room. One other disclaimer is when we have 30, or the bin size say 30 to 39, really means 30 to 39.9999999, et cetera. So anything with a three in the tens place will go in this 30 bin. Okay, so now let's go ahead and draw our bars. So as we counted, or we already separated our data into these 10 width bin chunks. So let's just count how many are in each. So I have one here, two here, two here, one, two, three, four, five, six in the 80 bin, three in the 90 bin, and one in the 100 bin. So now I'm gonna draw my bars on my histogram. So in this 30 bin, I have one, I'll draw my bar here. In the 40 and 50 bin, I have zero. So I'm just gonna leave no bars. In the 60 bin, I have two data values. In the 70 bin, I have two data values. In the 80 data bin, in the 80 bin, I have six values. So I'm gonna head up to one, two, three, four, five, six. In the 90 bin, I have three, and in the 100 bin, I have one. So one final touch here that I wanna make is that I need to label my frequency axis. So the first tick mark is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's important to label your tick marks just because in some cases you might have uh, tick marks representing more than one if you have a lot of data. All right. Thanks for watching. Great work.